Hey everyone, welcome back to Todos Santos. Today we are going to follow the river that we made last episode and complete our trilogy of utility builds with a water purification plant. Let's go. Now we have our funny looking reservoir here, which we're going to promptly delete pause the game so we don't uh, flood the entire city, and try to trace the path of this river through Todos Santos. I would like to have at least some idea of where this river goes so that we can keep that in mind as we do this build. Uh, now, most of it is going to be buried like through this dense part of the city, but uh, right here it's going to pop out from under this interchange and turn back into a normal river. I'm using these invisible terraforming roads to trace a uh, hopefully realistic windy path uh, from this reservoir over to that river entrance that we made. I don't know if it's quite uh, windy enough, but anyway, that's what we ended up with. So this is a reservoir. Obviously, it's going to be an artificial bulge, I guess you could call it, in the river. I don't know if that's really the word I want to use, but it's the word I used, so we're going to stick with that and uh, let it fill up with water. Now, this is a major problem that we're going to face throughout this build, is that this thing, I messed around with the sources of water higher up on the river in the mountains. Uh, I made, I added more of them. I deleted all of them except for one. And this reservoir just keeps filling up and being inundated with water, and we get flooding problems. So we're going to try a few things later on to take care of that. Uh, but at this point, I still was uh, in my naive, peaceful days where I had no idea that was going to happen. So I just thought I'd uh, get to doing some detailing, which is, of course, the fun part of this build. Just starting with a small dam so that they're able to control the amount of water that's in the reservoir. Of course, unfortunately, that, that doesn't actually apply to us. Uh, we just have to pretend that it, you can use it to open the floodgates and let more water in or out, depending on what the water levels are like. But uh, we have it uh, there visually, at least. I just used a couple of prefab house walls, turned them into POs, and stretched them out to look like uh, these slopes. I don't actually know what uh, purpose those serve. Probably some structural purpose, I guess. Uh, you have a lot of water pushing up against it. You're going to need a lot of strength to hold that back. I'm just assuming. Uh, so actually don't listen to anything I say. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but there are also a couple uh, little entrances down there. I guess those would be the floodgates. And then there's, uh, I'm using this warehouse door that kind of sticks up. And I guess that would just kind of represent the uh, physical gate part of the floodgate. So you could lift that up and you would see it come up and uh, let all the water through. Now, I don't know if this is actually realistic, but I also thought it would be kind of cool to have this be a miniature hydroelectric dam. So there's an electricity block in there just generating uh, that little bit of extra power for the city. Not that we really need it. We're making like twice as much power as we need because of our uh, power plant that we made back in episode uh, whatever, 32, I think. But it uh, satisfies my desire for immersion. So that's nice, I guess. And now, uh, the serious flooding problem was starting to bug me. So I decided to sink a water pump way down. And that was actually too effective because it was a one made a whole bunch of extra space for the water to sink down into, but it also sucked up uh, probably like 75% of the water in there. So it was actually too effective. So I got rid of that and uh, gave up on that project for now. So you can see the reservoir ends up being like almost completely filled, which I feel like is not a very safe thing that they would want to have happen. So we're going to get back to that later on. And until then, we're going to get to work on the actual facilities. Now, one thing that I noticed is in my research is that often uh, with these water purification plants, a lot of the process takes place indoors. I suppose it makes sense if you're going to be then uh, sending this water off to people claiming that it's clean. You probably don't want it to be sitting out in the open where a bunch of stuff can get into it after you've already purified it. Uh, but I did want to have a couple features outside of this main building. So we have these two giant tanks. This is where excess water will be stored, just uh, preparing for times of higher demand so that uh, in times of lower demand, you can produce excess and set it into there. Then we have the actual intake pipes in the reservoir that suck the water up through this tiny little pumping station and into the main building. Then we have these two stabilization basins and this uh, standalone building here. These would take care of any wastewater or solid waste that is produced during the purification process. And uh, now that we've got the numbers taken care of with some of the uh, water pump blocks, uh, we can go and delete these water pumps that have been sitting on the ocean for the last uh, 104 years, I guess. Okay, now to do a little bit of decoration, I wanted to have a service road that runs around the perimeter of the reservoir. I'm just using Network Multitools Parallel Function to get the road completely parallel and right up against it. And then using Node Controller to extend these curves to perfectly fit the stone key that we're using for our reservoir asset. 
And then I'm just extending this road network into a basic grid so that vehicles could in theory access all the different parts of the plant. For this kind of build, I also like to increase the corner offset uh, quite a bit for all these intersections uh, because it's mostly going to be giant trucks that are uh, meandering around this area, so they need a little bit more room to turn comfortably. Now I decided I couldn't put it off any longer, so I gave this whole reservoir thing another shot. Uh, I decided to go with basically the same theory as before, where we just give some extra space to the water by sinking it down, and it seems to work just about right. So now we have a reasonable amount of water in there. Okay, so now we need to connect this area up to the road network, and uh, that's maybe not as simple as it sounds, because this whole area on the north side of the freeway is completely empty, and I really had no idea what sort of development I wanted to do in here at first. So I knew that uh, whatever road I was going to plop down here would end up defining what we're going to do uh, with this part of the city. And in fact, that's going to be a big part of the episode later on, but uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so I wanted to have kind of a funky intersection here. So instead of just having the main entrance to this place uh, connect up with this main intersection, I thought it'd be interesting to have it uh, sort of be a one-way entrance, if that makes sense. So you can only enter and exit uh, from this onto one side of the road. You can't actually turn left out of there or turn left into it. So the trucks are forced to basically take the long way around, but in doing that, we don't have this big congested intersection where there are trucks constantly coming and going. It also looks kind of cool. Now I just got to connect up this park load to this strange little avenue that we have here and then take this avenue and extend it over here to connect it up to this park load because obviously we love park loads in this city. I got a little bridge here over this uh, mossy river and again I wasn't really sure what sort of development I wanted to have here so basically the choices and road I made here ended up kind of deciding the types of neighborhoods we're going to add. So I knew I didn't want to have like a high density district that would warrant this kind of six lane road so we're going to taper it down to a four lane road and uh, that gave me the idea of having this area be a much newer neighborhood that uh, really doesn't require that size or that density of infrastructure, but they have basically anticipated that eventually it will grow into that large type of district. Uh, so they have these roads that could in theory be upgraded into six lane roads, but we're going to get back to that sort of development in a minute because we need to get to detailing the main focus of the episode. But uh, I honestly had no idea how to detail this thing. So we're starting by doing what I know best, which is putting down a custom bus stop and building a giant parking lot that's uh, probably way oversized for this uh, type of facility, but uh, oh well. Uh, so I wanted to have this path go all the way from this tiny little entrance here uh, across the parking lot and over to the bus stop. Of course, we also encountered the dreaded uh, ruining texture, so I had to cover that up with some ploppable grass. Uh, that's really just a problem of my map theme. Uh, basically, th the way to do it would be to have a map theme that has the ruining texture be the same as the grass texture. Unfortunately, the one I have doesn't, and it seems like that's not something you can really change in Theme Mixer. Uh, so I'd have to do a custom theme outside of Theme Mixer, which I guess you can do. I really should look into that because it uh, definitely causes me some headaches sometimes. But anyway, I just uh, use some probable grass to figure that out there, and then some dry grass decals just to represent some desire paths where people are walking in from the parking lot over to the building. Now we just gotta fence this place off. Uh, you probably don't want people breaking into your water purification plant and putting stuff in the water supply, I guess. Uh, it seems like a bad idea. And uh, then I thought there would be some areas of pavement here and there uh, next to some of these facilities, just so uh, trucks could pull up more easily or you know do whatever you need to do there. And then the rest of it is just grass. Like I've mentioned before, I'm trying to have more of these open areas of grass in these sorts of builds uh, because they really aren't cramped. Uh, you, you'll usually see these things be pretty spread out. I way overdid the trees here. I thought, you know, they'd want to have a nice landscaped entrance, but uh, I think I went a little bit too far, so I have to thin some of these out. And then uh, I just uh, struggled detailing this place. So on this one side, we have a hedge running along the fence. I thought, you know, maybe they'd want to have one more landscape side and one more wild side uh, where they don't really care as much what it looks like. So then we have some grass running all along this edge, and uh, my theory there, at least, was that's going to help us transition to the dense forest that's going to cover everything pretty much beyond this going out into the hills. I'm using these seaweed decals to uh, make it look like, you know, there's a, a spot where, where the water has dried out and uh, it just leaves behind a little bit of residue there. And uh, that's pretty much it for the details. So I just need to make this place into a district. I didn't really know what to call it, so I'm just calling it Agua currently. If you have any funny or interesting ideas for names for this uh, facility, let me know, please. And then I also thought we, just to augment the water supply system of the city, I would go around to some of the population centers and add some water towers, uh, just as an intermediate step in between the water purification plant and 
your house in Toto Santos. It's free real estate. So now that the water treatment plant is done, we need to figure out what the heck to do with this area. So we're going to take the easy steps first and just extend this avenue all the way along, parallel to the freeway. I imagine this would have been like the main highway, uh, probably a two-lane highway, running through this area at some point. Eventually the freeway was built, eclipsing that, and now it's just a, kind of a standard main avenue. Uh, but we have an interesting point here where we have the freeway, uh, this new avenue, and then the avenue that carries all the BRT buses uh, across on the other side of the freeway. So I thought it would be an interesting opportunity to do a little bit of a spaghetti junction. Uh, so we have a combination of flyover ramps, cloverleaf ramps, and uh, normal service interchange style intersections uh, to get something a little bit different looking than we would usually do. I tried to be fairly land efficient, or at least as land efficient as you can be with an interchange like this. So where we have, uh, for example, this strange triangular land over on the right, I thought it would be a good spot for a cloverleaf ramp, although that's not uh, the final version there. It's a little lumpy looking. Uh, so we're gonna fix that up in a second. And then because this is a sunken highway, there are some ready-made opportunities for ramps going across here. So uh, that would make our flyover ramps much more viable in terms of cost. Obviously I have unlimited money on or uh, in all practicality, unlimited money on. Uh, but in real life, you could imagine the reason for building these flyover ramps is that uh, they don't really have to build that, lo that long of a span of bridge. Except for this one that goes from the BRT Avenue across here to head off to the east on the freeway. That one's a little bit longer and uh, more infrastructure intensive than the other ones. But it's also probably one of the most important because you would uh, want people to be able to get from the busy BRT Avenue in the San Juan district and get onto the freeway heading in this direction toward all the important stuff that uh, I haven't even thought about building yet because there's a whole vast empty area over on that end of town and uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do over there. Anyway, that one connects up with the on-ramp from the brand new avenue that we made and uh, we're gonna taper it off lane by lane and attach it to the main freeway. So we have two lanes merging into the two lane freeway here. Uh, it goes into four lanes and then that tapers down into three and then that tapers down into two. Unfortunately, we're not gonna have time for IMT stuff to match the lane mathematics at the moment, uh, but just keep in mind that that's the idea there. Now, one style of intersection that I really like is where you have these uh, two way roads that uh, kind of feed in and feed out of all the ramps. I don't know why, I just think that's kind of cool. So we're gonna have that here, where the two flyover ramps heading off of the freeway meet up, and then uh, one of the other on-ramps exits here. And we don't need to do the fourth one there because that is served by the cloverleaf, which could be accessed from either avenue. We also have another cloverleaf here. Um, so if you're turning off of the freeway, you wouldn't have to go through the intersection and then take a right turn on the slip lane to get onto the new avenue. You could just immediately take this cloverleaf. And there was space there anyway, we're not going to be able to build anything there because there's a big train track sunken down there. So I just thought it would be kind of cool to have that. I usually like to do this style of build with just the normal ground level roads. It looks a little weird at first, but then we can just go back through and upgrade all of them into bridges. Uh, I also realized it was really difficult for people to get from that avenue just across to the new avenue. So I added another bridge here as well. There aren't any uh, service interchange points here, uh, no ramps or anything. It's just simply a bridge to get from one district to the other. Of course, we have a lot of odd gaps here and there, so we need to come in, just do some very, very basic retaining wall stuff. We're not going to fully detail out this interchange yet because I don't know what the context uh, of the rest of the district around it is going to be. So I just wanted to do the most basic of uh, infrastructure detailing, so pillars and retaining walls. I also found a pretty weird glitch. I don't know if I actually recorded it, but I was having a problem where I was trying to convert the train track down here to a tunnel and it just wasn't working. It was very strange. Uh, yeah, I don't seem to have any footage of it, unfortunately. So I had to manually cover it up. It's not a big deal, just a little bit of ploppable grass, but uh, generally it's just a little easier to work with uh, normal ground instead of having to cover up things with a bunch of static props. But uh, that's just too bad because we're gonna have to move on to some suburban expansion. I was taking inspiration from San Juan, of course, as usual, but uh, I specifically looked at the areas of road network uh, kind of more on the outskirts of the main area of the city. And you have lots of these individual subdivisions that have their own unique and uh, sometimes a little odd road network. Some of them are more grid-based and some of them are a little bit more uh, what you might call organic, I guess. Uh, so I'm, I tried to take a variety of styles and uh, kind of keep them separate so that they each have their own character and their own spot in the city. 
And uh, when I say expansion, I mean expansion. We're going to add a lot of roads, a lot of buildings. And so I think it's uh, time for a nice little bit of music and a time lapse. type of neighborhood I noticed while I was uh, researching San Juan and uh, looking at it on Google Maps is what I believe is called uh, an uh, urbanization, which is, I think, a privately developed subdivision where you would have things like condos, townhomes, uh, or maybe sing single family homes as well. Uh, but usually they seem to be done in a consistent style. So I'm using these adorable Arcadian row houses by The Lost Cake, which uh, you can find linked down in the description. Uh, but I really like how these end up looking when you paste these out along uh, these parking lots like this. I just think uh, the final result of all of these clustered together just looks really nice. Of course, as you might expect at this sort of development, there's a large central building. I guess this would be administration and uh, maybe like a rec room or something like that. And then there's this big ostentatious pool in the center with just a little bit of detailing around it. Basically just some trees and planters. I didn't want to go uh, too far into the detailing for this kind of stuff because we're going to have to make lots of these sorts of things throughout the city. So I don't want to get too stuck on detailing all of those. Okay, so we got all our road networks down. But unfortunately on this series, I just don't have time to show the placement of every single building. Because if we did that, and I've talked about this many times before, we will never ever finish Toto Santos. But I really want to finish Toto Santos, so we're going to occasionally have to do things like this, where I just uh, do it off screen and show you the results. And also plop a whole bunch of trees off screen. I think this really uh, brings this place to life and uh, emphasizes how separated each of these subdivisions are. And I wanted to give them just the bare minimum of detailing here with a fence that runs along the freeway. Uh, of course, this isn't helping with our whole, you know, approaching the node limit issue, but I didn't know that at the time. So I might have to come back and delete this and uh, do it with IMT instead, just to save on a few nodes. I didn't want to leave this space in between the landfill and the water purification plant empty, uh, certainly not when we're doing all this suburban expansion anyway. So I end up making a cluster of hills up here. I believe this uh, kind of formation is called a magoti. It's something we're going to get into quite a bit later in the series in some of the uh, more agricultural outskirts builds that we're going to be doing. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to make a couple of those. We're going to add another neighborhood in there in a second and then have this uh, kind of standalone subdivision here on this side of the avenue. So the rest of this area is going to be completely surrounded by trees and we're just going to have this kind of a very dense neighborhood in the middle of all of that, which I think is kind of an interesting idea. There is, however, one road that uh, comes out of the back there and heads up into the hills, and that is what is going to turn into the hill neighborhood that I was talking about. The road network and house placement is quite similar to what we did last episode over on the other side of the landfill. So if you want to see a full sort of expansion in this style, uh, go check that episode out if you haven't seen it yet. 
it looks uh, a little bit strange before we put all the houses and trees down, but once we get all that together, I think it has uh, kind of a nice look to it. Now, this isn't even the extent of the suburban expansion that we're going to do this episode. Because I was still uh, feeling the urge to build some neighborhoods like this, so I did quite a bit of extra recording. If you'd like to see the full time lapse of building this, or this, consider checking out the link in the description. So that's it for this episode. Let me know what you think I could do to improve the details on the water purification plant. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.